Time to solve a quick problem today. I figured I'd take a video and walk through the workflow. Since a lot of people use a lot of different workflows. We're gonna create this. This little cap. We're gonna replace these caps. I refill these soda streams. And in the past we've tossed these caps or they've gotten lost. I need to make a few replacement ones. I've already made one, so I'm gonna walk you through the workflow real quick using simple free 3D software. Many, 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 many ways you can do this. All right. Uh, Fusion is great. SketchUp is fantastic. We're going to do it the free way, the simple way, what a beginner could do. We're going to need a couple pieces of software. We're going to need our SketchUp. SketchUp Make 2017. And I'm recording this back on purpose because uh, you get an overview instead of screen grabs. We'll delete that out of there. We're going to use our 3D Builder, which is an app built into Microsoft. You can order it from the store. I use this for a lot of conversions. It's fantastic. It's simple. It's quick. It doesn't do a lot, but it's much better than, um, well, I mean, we can use Blender, Mesh Mixer. We use a lot of different things in order to, um, well, I don't want to say it, convert back and forth between files. Because SketchUp. SketchUp Pro will export STLs. SketchUp Make does not. So, if you're not using one of these 3D mouses, this is a 3D connection space mouse. It's amazing for SketchUp and Fusion. So what we've got to do is create these caps. We're also going to use uh, Kira, of course, to do our slicing with. This one's already set up for... The CR10 that's uh, loaded up with a uh, purple TPU. And we will, of course, need our web browser. It's so already using Octoprint tied into our CR10. Let's run one run and a spreadsheet to keep track of stuff. This is where I keep track of how much and all of my notes about particular things. As an interesting sidebar, my G-code files, I name them like this. I so use multiple materials, multiple printers, etc. So the G-code files are named printer, underscore file name, underscore G for grams, how many grams? H for time, how many hours, L for layer, F for fill, M for material, T for temperature, that's a nozzle temperature, B for bed temperature. Now I've also added in the nozzle, and what that allows me to do is off here to the side, you notice, I've got this file name then, creates that using our regular expression. What we're doing is we're extracting the dash and the letter out the data after it. I'm going to make another video about that some other time. So let's get our cap made. Here's how easy it is. We'll go into SketchUp. And we will First, create a circle. And that circle needs to be about 10.25 in radius because we've got about 20 and a half on the outside diameter of those threads. So it's going to be the inside diameter of our circle. And then we need to. Well, there's another easier way to do it. Let's uh, let's make that circle. Let's make that circle. Uh, and we'll subtract our inside diameter. Let's make that circle um, somewhere around 13. All right. Then we'll pull that up. Make it uh, a couple millimeters should be fine. We got our circle, two millimeter thick circle. Take our edge 
edge tool here and we'll pull in an edge. Um, it's come in about one and a half. That should take that and extrude that up. Oh, wrong one. Extrude that up. We already measured this. It's about 15 millimeters. There you go. Now you have a cap. Very, 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 very simple. Very easy to do in sketching. Very if I would save that. Now again, generally I save all of my files as a file name and version. So we're going to call it Soda Stream C O Two Underscore Cap Dash Version. This is actually going to be version two since I've got another one made version 2 dash V2 and then the revision dash 01. Let me save that up on our desktop. Can't save it in this PC, of course you can't. We're going to put it on the desktop. Right now we have a SketchUp file. Now we're going to take this, we're going to export this. Export the 3D model. We're going to export it as an object file to the desktop. I tend to use my desktop as you would a desktop, things you're working on. Now, you can't tell that from my desktop <laughs> because it's a mess. Now we have this object file, though. This object file we can do a lot with. We can drag it back and forth. The idea is we want to go from a SketchUp file to an object file, import it into 3D Builder, transfer it then to an STL, bring it into Cura, chop it up in G-Code, send it to our printer. So we've got that, we can minimize that. We're gonna take our 3D builder, we're gonna drag this puppy into here. All right, import that model. We're gonna need to do a little bit of modification because they see X and Y and Z in different places, the different software does. Uh, so we're gonna set that to zero, zero, put it back onto our axis. Um, so, as a word of note, this, uh, and we're going to orient it, but as a note, the 3D mouse does not work very well. All it does is zoom in 3D Builder because the 3D Builder is so simple. We're going to orient that to 90, take that object, settle it down to the build plate, give it a color so that way we can see it. Perfect. There we go. Now we have it in 3D Builder. We'll go ahead and save that as a 3MF, as a 3MF 3D Builder file onto our desktop, just because it'll be easier to come back if we want to make any changes to it in this format. Now we're going to go ahead and save it as an STL. STL because Kira likes, Kira will take that 3MF file and slice it, but I like to have STLs in order to share the file. We're also going to save it as an SDL. It's going to lose some, of course, it's going to lose the color, etc. if you're saving it as an SDL, but we're going to save it as an SDL. We've got our file here as an STL. We're going to hop over to Kira. It's already set up for our, this just says clear TPU. It's one of my profiles I've got in there. Drag that into here. There we go. Now we have sliceable file. Make sure it's sitting on the build plate, which it is as long as you've got it set to drop it directly to the build plate. It's a good idea to have it. There's no supports needed for this. It's a nice simple thing to click prepare. We've already gone through and changed all of our settings. Calibrator, extruder, made sure that the printer is printing just fine. We've got a file here and printed with a 1.0 nozzle at 0.5 millimeter layers. This TPU works fantastic at that. So this is going to take six minutes to print out. We're going to now save that to a file or put it up on our desktop. It's going to give you the printer name already. It's going to insert it here. File names to me, once you start making a whole bunch of different things, you wind up with a file naming problem. You wind up with 25 of a 
different thing and you have no idea. That's why I am adamant about making sure that we do a some type of consistent file naming so that way we can look at a G-code file and know exactly what it was sliced at. So we're going to say this is the uh, stream CO2 cap, let's say dash G006 grams, dash H, I'm sorry, it was 4 grams, dash H for the time, 0006, dash layer 05, dash fill 00, and then our it really doesn't matter what order we put these in. Our temperature is 220. Our material is TPU. And the TPU bed is at zero. And our nozzle is a 1.0. Now I'll grab this and highlight it and copy it simply so we can paste it into our spreadsheet. We'll save this on the desktop. We now have a G-code file right here that we can send directly to the printer. Well, I've got this up. We'll hop over the spreadsheet real quick. And I've already pasted one in here. We're gonna paste that right in here. What that's going to do is give us a running total then here of our weight, our times, and I've got I don't know if you can see it in the video. We've got a tab for drop down data, school inventory, material temps, um, etc. So that way I can run a simple report to see how much use a printer has had and whether it's not whether it's successful, different changes that I made, etc. Go over to our printer. There's one of our printers. Well, all we have to do is take this G code file, drag it up, and upload it locally to the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and there's our file. We're going to click print, load and print, and there we go. What you're going to wind up with in six minutes then is this cap. It's a functional use of 3D printing using completely free software. Or, let's see, what does that cap actually cost us? Six grams of TPU, we can look, 12 cents. So this costs 12 cents to make. And now we can make as many of them as we need.